Hi everyone, this is Todd with Prepper Website. I'm doing another Prepper Website weekly recap. And this is where I pull out a few articles that I think are articles that you shouldn't miss. Of course, all the articles on Prepper Website I think are great and you should not miss any of them, but uh, these are definitely some that I wanna go back and kinda highlight. So let's go ahead and get started. Over at Prepper's Will, um, talked a little bit about making the right fire types. And what I like about this article is he, he tells you the different fire types, um, how to do it, and then why you should you should make them. So you've got the TP fire, the long fire, um, the stone line fire, automatic fire, uh, snake hole fire, star shaped fire, the hunter fire, uh, the Dakota hole, uh, and um, just I think it's a good article just to kind of know different types of fires and why you would want to make them and uh, what you should do when you're out there in the woods and you're camping and you need some some fire so uh, you should go ahead and check that article out moving on to survival Sullivan how to live without a fridge I thought this was an interesting article um, he talks a little bit about um, why you know he that he's lived without refrigerators for uh, a little bit of time and has a little bit of experience but you know one of the things we think uh, in our modern age is we think everything needs to go into the refrigerator so he's talked a little bit about fruit and how long they can survive outside of the refrigerator um, one of the things that you want to to know is that when refrig when fruits have been refrigerated which most grocery stores do that um, it cuts the the life of the fruit in half so that's something to kind of keep in mind um, talks a little about about herbs and vegetables and how long they can stay out um, maybe on your counter or out in the open without any refrigeration talks about eggs um, and definitely the ones that you get at the store you know are, uh, have the bloom off of them, but if you can get farm fresh eggs, um, they will definitely last longer. You can always use mineral oil as well, and those there's articles on Prepper website about that. Condiments, uh, dairy. A lot of people don't realize that you can have butter out for uh, you know on your counter for a while. Um, yogurt and cheese. Um, you know, milk is is gonna have a you're gonna have a problem with milk, um, but anyway, hopefully, um, if, if you're one of the lucky ones, maybe you have. Uh, a cow or a goat, I guess, that you can milk and you have fresh milk every single day. Um, talks a little bit about meat and then some alternatives to a fridge. And those of you that maybe live up north, you have a basement uh, or a root cellar that you can uh, you can use. Um, store food in large five gallon buckets in a hole in the ground that might work. I think if you go six feet into the ground, um, the, um, the, the ground, it, it's um, a consistent uh, temperature. I can't remember what that temperature is, but anyway, a zero pot. If you are uh, somewhere where there's not a lot of humidity, that'll definitely work. And uh, anyway, so that's. I think it's a, a good article to kind of know. Uh, I think if you, I think he allows you to yeah to print off the PDF of his article if you want to do that. So down below. So we'll uh, move on from there. Going on to backwood survival. Um, this article was entitled, Your Tinfoil Hat is Making Us All Look Crazy. And I, I have to agree with him uh, to a point. Um, you know, Jade Helm had a lot of people freaking out, even people who, um, who normally don't think about preparedness and don't think about that kind of stuff. Um, a lot of people were hitting me up, people that I know personally that live here in, in, in my city. Uh, we're hitting me, hitting me up because they know that you know I own Prepper website, and we're asking me questions, and it opened up the uh, opportunity to talk about preparedness. And I was like, look, you don't need to worry about this part of it, but you need to make sure that you know you do have some preparations. I think that this kind of speaks in in the whole reason why there was people were a little upset about it, and people were uh, you know looking at it and and thinking that there could be something behind it, it, it kind of speaks to the fact that people just don't trust the government right now. And so I think that's one big uh, thing that you can take away from this is that people are, are a little curious now where in the past, you know, people might have looked and you had a lot of military people coming out saying, hey, this is normal, we do this all the time. But I just think in, in this time where we are right now, people are a little bit, um, 
more curious and doubtful that the government might be doing the right thing. So I think that kind of spoke to that. And so kind of will give people a little bit of a break out there. But yeah, there's always something happening. There's always, the world is always uh, that, you know, that line in uh, Men in Black, the world is always ending, you know, and so that's something, something to always keep at the back of your mind. All right. I think um, it's the second article from Prepper's Will. And um, the title is Prepping Your Car for an Emergency Escape, but I'm not really interested in the escape part of it, just in the fact that, you know, your automobile is an important um important part of your of your life and just some things that you should be taking into account uh, keeping it in good working order having a little a repair kit some things you know if you have room in your vehicle to go ahead and keep some of those things it'd be you know be important um, having an emergency kit or a first aid kit definitely I think you everyone should have a first aid kit in their vehicle uh, and talk talks a little bit about safe travels and then always having a plan B Anyway, that's an article to kind of take a look at there. Uh, Homestead Basics. I, I put this article here in this one and I linked to it just because I remember this movie. And uh, it came out in 1983. So I was old enough to know that, um, it, you know, it, 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 was a, it was a scary movie. It was about a nuclear, a nuclear war. And um, it looks at, uh, a, you know, one specific little community and the things that they go through if everything fell apart and everything collapsed. And so I was old enough to remember, uh, or I'm sorry, I was old enough to know that they, this was a serious thing and this could happen and it was very, very scary. But I was young enough to just know that it was also, uh, you know, kind of move on and forget about it when, you know, life starts to happen. But anyway, so I linked to this one just because I think this is good. And if you have some time just to go back and take a look at that uh, video, I think it, it was, I think it said here, it had a record-breaking 100 million views viewers during the initial broadcast, so I think that's pretty uh, pretty significant there. Hey, I posted this one on Saturday. Um, it's proof the and this was on Survival Blog. Proof the economy will get worse uh, from the Department of Education, and I think this is a very curious article. Um, not because of, of, of what is said, well, not because of the person who wrote it, but I think it's very, very interesting, the stuff that's there, and you can actually click on it. So um, basically this guy who wrote this in, uh, sent it into Survival Blog, uh, says he's a professor and that he stays up with uh, FAFSA. And FAFSA is the way, it's the federal application for student aid. It's the way students get aid. And basically what he's saying is, is if when you apply for financial aid, so if you were applying for 2016, um, you would be sending in your tax records from 2015 or you would be sharing those. And so what he is saying here is they have changed um, what they're going to require. So let me see, let me just read this here just for a second. I just received information from the Department of Education announcing that the FAFSA for the 2017-2000 academic year will be based not on the tax returns from the prior year, which would normally be 2016, but instead they will be based on the tax returns from two years before, in other words, from the year 2015. So I guess you're good for this next year, but the year after the, the academic year 2017-2018, that you're going to have to show records from 2015. And one of the reasons he's saying that is because the more money you make, the less money you get from the government. The less money you make, the more money the government uh, pitches in into your, into your, uh, to what they're willing to pay for your college education. And so what he's saying is that this next year in 2016, so many people are going to be hurt financially that the government would have to be forking out a whole lot more money to help those people out. So instead, they're going to want two years. Uh, they want to go back two years where the economy was just a little bit more stable. And uh, I think that's very curious because he's saying is maybe the government knows something or the Department of Education knows something that they don't know or that that, you know, that they're not really wanting to divulge. But anyway, you can go to this Department of Education announcement down here on this link and you can find the um, 
the, the release on what uh, the what the Department of Education is saying concerning FAFSA, and it's right there on their website. So I think it's very very interesting and something to uh, something kind of just to keep uh, an eye out for because this is something that's never been done before in the in the history of uh, in of FAFSA and federal aid from from the, their government. So anyway, something to keep an eye out. Um, this guy, I think a lot of people have seen this guy's videos. This is another video that this guy has done and he builds a tiled roof hut. I mean, he's totally primitive. And so he, um, I mean, everything, even from creating that ax and you saw that ax and he's, I mean, it's just pretty phenomenal. Now, I think if you go down to his website, his, uh, it, I think it took him over 365 days. I remember seeing that somewhere, but um, it's very, very interesting. And the fact is, I, I think just the fact that you can do this, um, of course, it's, it takes a long time, it's hard, but he makes his own uh, stove so that he can burn tiles. And I think this is the guy who made that one video that was very, very popular as well, um, that he basically used the mud and had the, the wood stove on the outside or you know attached to it. Um, on this one, again, he burns tiles. Um, he makes his own stove. He burns tiles. Uh, he creates tiles. He makes this, uh, you see that thing in his hand. It's uh, something that allows him to make a tile. And then he, he fires them. And it just, it, it's just so interesting. Again, I mean, you can do it. A very primitive way. Um, he begins to... He creates a, a heated floor. I don't know. I, I skipped over that part of it. But anyway, um, starts building the wall. So I don't know exactly where he's at. Um, don't know why you would need a heated floor. It looks kind of jungle to me, I guess. Uh, but anyway, um, it was pretty dark in here. So when you get to he, um, this that's more of the finished product there, the house, the shelter. You go inside and it's very um, it's pretty dark. So I don't know if you can put some kind of like a natural lighting, a hole in 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 there. But again, that would. Uh, I'll probably let rain and stuff in but I just think this is very creative uh, awesome the fact that you could do something like this anyway so that's over in this fairly new uh, website primitive technology wordpress.com and so he's got he doesn't have so many articles but he's out there out there getting it done it's amazing um, okay backdoor survival 20 home security and crime prevention secrets for preppers um, I, I'm glad gay did this because I think that as the economy begins to tank more and more, we're going to see more of this uh, in, in our neighborhoods, in our homes. And she actually <clears throat> alludes to this. Um, she lives on an island. <clears throat> Excuse me. She lives on an island and um, kind of everybody knows everybody and that kind of stuff. But there have been some burglaries there and people breaking into homes and stealing things. So again, as the economy begins to tank, I believe this is going to happen more and more. So some things to keep in mind to secure your home um, there, you know, securing your doors with multiple locks, reinforce your door frames, don't leave keys out, put your name in a, don't put your name and address on key rings, keep your outdoor areas lit, consider alarm system, internal locks to, and you know, alarm systems, you can create, you can buy some really cheap ones now that work and they might not be monitored to some you know a monitoring system that would call you but to be honest my experience is by the time those people get involved that you know the thief is already gone so what you want is something to just kind of make noise so people will run and, and not stay in your home but anyway uh securing all this information there and adding locks to your gates know your neighbors get a dog landscaping securing sliding doors i mean some of these are basic things but they're good reminders because we start to get into a very um, lackadaisical mode and, you know, nothing's ever happened or things haven't happened in a long time. And then, you know, as soon as you let your guard down, something happens. So some things to keep in mind and things to put in place for your uh, home security. Uh, Prepper Journal had a great article. Um, this was a guest, I believe. Yeah, a guest post on terrorism, uh, what to do uh, when 
when major man-made disasters happen. Um, and what I like about them is this article is it talks about the, the terrorism, it talks about why maybe some of the, the philosophy behind it, and then what you should do. And so again, it covers hijacking, um, bomb attacks, I'm just gonna keep going. And so it talks about the individual attacks, you know, like package, letter bomb, grenades, car bomb attacks, um, public transportation attacks, survive a, a, a suicide bomber attack. Um, talks about war. Um, let's see here. Nuclear attacks. Uh, what to do with the... I thought this was interesting too. So you talked about the lethal, lethal dosage of radiation. And then, you know, if it was a smaller bomb, uh, what you would do if, you know, uh, how to get, you know, if you need to like shelter in place for a certain amount of time to cut the radiation in half before you move to like a, you bug out or something like that or if you need to seal yourself in. But anyway, some, some good things there. Biological and chemical attack. Um, engineered virus and other biological attacks. Let's see here. But anyway, a lot of good information there. So um, something that you should um, take a look at. And uh, kind of, again, all this stuff is like you have in the back of your mind. Um, moving on. Modern Survival Online had What's Your tr Trigger? And um, just what's your trigger for an SHTF event? It's a very short article, so it's not. I'm not really pointing to the article here. What I what I do want to just kind of uh, point to are just the comments and things that people said. And um, some of them are you know worthwhile reading. Others are just like yeah, I don't know about that one. But <clears throat> it's just you you gain a lot from people when you read some of the comments. And so <clears throat> don't don't. I would always say look at the comments. Don't don't always neglect that. <clears throat> Got to take a drink here. I don't know what's going on with my throat. <clears throat> All right, the Grow Network, uh, grow your own groceries. I thought this was an interesting article about uh, water beads. And so, some of you who are encountering drought but still want to make sure that you are gardening, um, there are things that you can buy. You know, water beads and they just absorb a lot of water and this person had a lot went from watering every um two times a day to maybe watering one time a day when it was a very severe drought by mixing some of these water beads in and so it's a short article but something interesting if you're encountering drought and you need to uh continue to garden so and it, i think it's, the water beads were very cheap to to get yeah so a uh, one pound bag was 10 bucks, you know, off of Amazon, I think. All right. Uh, let me see here. This is criminals don't think like you. The truth about disarming Funker Tactical has this um, this um, this video. And so he's talking about criminals, how they don't think. So I'm going to just let play a little bit. All right, so I think that's an interesting video there. And it's not very long, but something, uh, again, to consider. And he talked a little bit about, they show uh, a lot of videos while he's talking as well of uh, examples of how criminals get so close to you or as someone who uh, might have a little bit of training or, or is defending, is staying a little you know further back and uh, taking that, that approach. So anyway, a good video to take a look at. Um, over, over at Organic, prepper replacing documents after a disaster so she talks a little bit about um, um, why you would need that and she also has uh, an article and I, I didn't link to it on this one uh, on on the recap but uh, on the fires and how fast um, there's videos of of people that are are leaving their homes in California and uh, the fire is all around them it's very very crazy um, 
I was, I was, when I was watching that, I was like, just stunned. But anyway, so I guess that article kind of uh, spawned this one uh, about making sure that your important documents don't get left behind. And so, you know, some of the things she talks about being proactive before disaster, photograph all your important documents, have them uh, store them securely, keeping photocopies of documents in a secure location away from your home, scanning documents, uh, protect important documents. And then uh, if I like a fireproof safe and having those kinds of things uh, in place. Um, and then she gives you, you know, some of the documents that you should be thinking about, like your birth certificate, your driver's license, social passport, um, insurance policies, tax records. I mean, we don't always think about those things. Firearms records, uh, credit card information, property deeds, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. And then she gives you some, she gives you places to kind of, uh, if you lose those, you know, where, where you need to, uh, where you need to, to call people you need to call websites to, to go take a look at. All right, last one. I, I linked to Lonnie's um, video last uh, last week as well because he created this cool, um, he, he does this cool shelter here. And um, he created this, I really linked last week to this, uh, this wood stove that he made out of a, a steel uh, or metal can. And um, he's, he incorporates it into this, uh, this tent that he built and so what he does is he gets some fire retardant let me see here some fire retardant material and he walks you through step by step uh, talks a little bit about some of the problems that he's had in doing this and uh, takes step by step and it's pretty interesting um, talks about he's making little eaves here but I'm gonna go ahead and move forward to the um, actual where he has this up and so you have the you have your TP there and the wood stove going and I, I just think you know that wood stove was so um, I don't want to stay too long on this but that wood stove was so uh, portable and easy to carry and so that's the way it looks when you uh, when you have it totally installed and then let me see if I can get a shot of him on the inside there and so here he is and um, he's actually has two uh, two is it two cots I think it's two cots or two bedrolls here uh, his wife is on the other side and he just kind of uh, he talks a little bit about why um, he did it this way in his design I just think it's something that's great I mean if you can make something like this and have it He's talking about how much light this is letting in. He that's something that he wasn't planning on, which is great, you know, uh, when you have everything closed up. But if it's something you can have just as an extra shelter, I think that would be great. But anyway, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and end it here and uh, tell you again. Thanks so much for watching. If you can uh, like the the video, I would appreciate it if you could share it out. Again, all the, the articles that I link to or that I've talked about here in this video are going to be below in the description so that you can easily get to them. All right. Thanks so much for watching.